Hi hey everyone and welcome back to the S&P Saga. This video is a little bit different as we wanted to put together pieces of advice for new investors. With the markets at all time high, I'm sure many retail investors will want to get started to predict the next big earnings spot. The reason I believe this is coming is that the S&P 500 has already returned 24% in 2023 and is up 21% as of September 2024 year to date. Let's get started. Navigating the stock market can feel like learning a new language, filled with complex wording and unpredictable swings. It's no wonder new investors often feel overwhelmed. To help demystify the process, let's break down some key takeaways, moving from the most straightforward to the most nuanced concept. These insights, drawn from academic studies, will equip you to approach investing with a discerning eye. The most fundamental and obvious lesson for any investor is this. Companies sometimes manipulate their earnings to present a rosier picture than reality. This practice, known as earnings management, can artificially inflate a company's reported profits, masking potential financial issues. And the answer is, don't be complacent. Don't just sit running winners without asking some fundamental questions. All right. First of all, is this a company run by a dominant CEO? Secondly, is it consistently, almost too consistently, beating earnings estimates, at which point you need to start drilling into how, and is it already expensive? All right. And if you get wind of one, two, and three together, is it the kind of firm you want to remain invested in? Food for thought there. Don't be fooled by impressive sounding earnings figures alone. The practice might be illegal in some cases, but you will lose your money long before the judge makes a favorable decision. A simple way to spot potential earnings manipulation is by comparing a company's net income to its cash flow from operations. If net income consistently outpaces cash flow from operations, it could be a red flag that the company is using aggressive accounting to boost its earnings. Remember, a company generating robust cash flow is often a better investment than one that relies solely on accounting tricks. Furthermore, Jiao, in his 2020 paper, emphasizes that understanding a company's earning quality is as crucial as the earnings figure itself. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of companies consistently exceeding analysts' expectations. However, as hinted by Jiao again, these habitual outperformers might be engaging in unsustainable earnings manipulation to maintain their streak. Instead of solely focusing on whether a company beat or missed estimates, investors should scrutinize the sustainability and quality of this earnings. We'll cover this part in another section. Examining factors like cash flow generation, accounting practices, and the company's overall business model can offer valuable insight into the true nature of their financial performance. Another common misconception is that a company's stock price automatically rises when it beats earnings expectations. While a positive earnings surprise can signal a company is performing well, it's crucial to remember that stock prices are influenced by a complex interplay of factors. Factors like revenue growth, future guidance provided by management, and the company's overall valuation play a significant role in determining stock price moves. For instance, Alvarado, Clark, and Gutierrez note in their 2021 paper that the S&P 500 firm firms lowering their future earnings guidance experience a return of 3% lower than firms with guidance in line with expectations. This underscores that a single earnings beat shouldn't be the sole basis for investment decisions. Always consider the bigger picture. Adding another layer of complexity, companies' forward-looking statements, commonly known as guidance, become crucial in interpreting earnings releases. In the same paper, the authors demonstrate this by showcasing how lowered guidance, even when accompanying a positive earnings surprise, can trigger negative market reaction. Um, and I, I think mm -hmm. one of the reasons that you're seeing the stock under pressure here is this uh, second quarter earnings per share forecast of 23 to 27 cents. Analysts have been predicting the upper end of that 27 cents. So that is perhaps why we are seeing uh, the stock fall here. This highlights the importance of looking beyond past results and understanding a company's expectations for the future. Raised guidance, on the other hand, can indicate robust future performance and potentially outweigh concerns over past hiccups. 
Believe it or not, even the timing of earnings announcement can impact how the market reacts. Alvarado, Clark, and Gutierrez 2021 paper indicate that the aftermarket evening earnings announcement might lead to higher stock price volatility compared to pre-market morning announcements. Why? When companies release earnings after market closes, investors have more time to digest the information and trade after hours, leading to more measured trading activity the following day. This highlights a subtle but important dynamic. Market reactions aren't always driven by pure fundamentals. Investor behavior and information flow play a role too. It should be noted that increased pre-market and after-hours trading means that the price change will be visible to retail investors but will occur outside of regular hours. The same paper points out that energy, telecom, and utility sectors of the S&P 500 are not impacted by this finding. Now let's explore a slightly less obvious but equally important concept, the relationship between earnings surprises and future earnings. The 2006 paper by Doyle, Lundholm, and Soliman suggests that the magnitude of an earnings surprise, especially a negative one, can offer clues about a company's future earnings potential. In simpler terms, bigger surprises tend to be more persistent. For instance, a company with unexpectedly high earnings might be experiencing a sustainable surge in demand for its products or services. Conversely, a significant earnings miss could indicate deeper operational issues or a significant shift in customers' buying patterns. Keep in mind, this relationship isn't foolproof, but it underscores the importance of looking beyond the headline earnings numbers and considering the context once again. Analyst forecasts, while imperfect, provide valuable insight into market sentiment. Pay close attention to the dispersion of analyst forecasts, which measures the range of earnings predictions for a particular company. Kinney, Bergstaller, and Martin suggest in their 2002 paper that when analyst forecasts are tightly clustered, stock prices tend to react more strongly to earnings surprises, whether positive or negative. This is because low dispersion suggests a higher degree of consensus among analysts about a company's prospects. When that consensus is broken, either positively or negatively, the market takes notice. So when we talked about earnings quality, uh, just to abbreviate EQ, we talked briefly about this concept of earnings management. We kind of had this idea that some firms would uh, kind of engage in transactions specifically to kind of manipulate or massage this earnings number without necessarily rising uh, to the level of fraud, so not necessarily something that's illegal. Uh, so I want to talk a little more in depth about what earnings management is and, and kind of provide an example of how a firm could go about managing earnings. Uh, but let's start with a, with a definition. It's, it's really you're timing a transaction, all right, some sale of an asset or something like that, to create a gain or a loss with really the main purpose not being some kind of economic rationale, but really just to manipulate uh, the earnings number. That's, that's really kind of what you're trying to do. You're just trying to bump up earnings or in some cases bump it down a little bit. Uh, and again, it's important to note uh, that when we talk about this, let me just slide down, this is not necessarily illegal, right? We're not talking about firms just engaging in outright fraud. That's a different discussion. Moving to more nuanced concepts, Smith's 2005 dissertation on the importance of evaluating a company's earnings quality notes that high-quality earnings are those that accurately reflect the company's underlying economic performance and are less susceptible to manipulation. Conversely, low-quality earnings might be distorted by aggressive accounting or one-time gains, making them less reliable indicators of future performance. One way to assess earnings quality is by considering a company's earnings management constraint. This concept, explored in Smith's paper, refers to the limitation a company faces when attempting to manipulate its earnings. Companies with low earnings management constraints have more leeway to manipulate their earnings, making their reported earnings surprises potentially less trustworthy. While assessing earnings management constraint requires a deeper understanding of accounting principles, it highlights a critical point. Don't blindly trust reported earnings. Seek out companies with a history of transparent financial reporting and conservative accounting practices. 
Finally, let's address the role of institutional investors, large entities like pension funds and mutual funds that hold significant stakes in publicly traded companies. While often perceived as sophisticated market participants, Davis Garcia Sestona suggests in their 2023 paper that even institutional investors can influence earnings management practices, sometimes inadvertently. A high concentration of institutional ownership in a company can, in cases of companies with low institutional ownership, create pressure on management to meet short-term earnings starts. This pressure can, in turn, lead to a greater emphasis on earnings management, potentially compromising the quality of reported earnings. Understanding this dynamic emphasizes the importance of considering corporate governance factors alongside traditional financial metrics. As you embark on your investment journey, remember that there is no magic formula for guaranteed success. The takeaways we've discussed, drawn from rigorous academic studies, offer valuable insights to help you navigate the complexities of the market. Never rely on a single metric or piece of information to make investment decisions. Instead, adopt a multifaceted approach. Scrutinize earnings quality, consider market expectations, understand the limitation of earnings surprises, and be mindful of corporate governance factors. By staying informed, asking critical questions and focusing on the long term, you can increase your chances of building a successful investment portfolio. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more insights into the world of investing and the S&P 500. Drop your questions and thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.